<laughs> Mr. Ed here. Today is October the 13th, I think, or 14th. Yeah, the 14th. 2022, I'm in Covington, Louisiana, only about mm, five miles maybe from the Abbey. And today, we got a nice one today. It's cool right now. It's right around 60 degrees, a little bit, maybe a little bit cooler, 58, 57, something like that. So it's a little chilly, it's early in the morning, and this morning, bees in a tree. <laughs> what's, what's the story on this one is back in June, the owner of the property had a tree removed from, from it, and this limb right here was on that tree and it had bees in it. So what he did, he just picked the, the limb up, bees and all, and he set it right here. And I had never um, experienced this part before. And that it, it would seem that the, the orientation of the comb in the hive, whether the tree is being up like this, that the comb inside it would be oriented like this. And now that the limb or the, the branch is this way horizontal, uh, I would have always thought that it was not good for the bees to do that but apparently since this limb has been here since middle of June and now we're in the middle of October these bees have adjusted to it so that's that's something that I've learned that's uh, I never knew before that they could do it because generally once a tree hits the ground uh, and, the, and the comb come dislodged the bees don't have long to to go the um, high beetles come in and it's, it's just a mess but these bees apparently they're doing really great so what I'm gonna be doing today is with the help of Julio we're gonna be uh, cutting the log splitting it open and vacuuming up the bees by the grace of God we'll get the queen out of here comb out of here and we're gonna move these girls up to the Abbey so yeah one more thing today I get to use my new everything BVAC. This is the 2.5 generation model right here. I just got it uh, about two days ago and I am really anxious to use these. Tony has done a lot of tweaking on this thing. I love, love the, he's got a handle up on the top, a handle on the side. He's got the control. You can either have a remote control. I got all the bells and whistles on this one. I got the remote control. I got the uh, um, extra long battery in it. Um, it it's, it's just a, a little bit, little bit more expensive. But since I, I use I use the Everything BVAC on every job it comes with us, and I generally use it as a cleanup. But on places where we don't have electricity, this is my go-to machine. I mean, this is an awesome tool. So it's the Everything BVAC, and I'll tell you what, it's worth the money you pay for it. So using a BVAC today. We're going to cut these, this tree open, get the bees out, and then bring them up to the abbey. Let's wrangle some bees, huh? Oh, I'm going to show you the picture of the bees inside this little hole. And like I said, it is a little bit chilly right now. The bees aren't flying, but they're huddled up in there really good. It's always a guess as to where the comb is in the hive, but we'll cut, cut it at a guess point and... Maybe we'll get lucky and not hit any cone. All right, let's open up this log. All right, to, to start this off, I'm gonna try to see if my super duper heavy duty chainsaw is gonna try to curve the top of it so that we're gonna be able to split that log right there. So let me see if this thing will work. If not, we'll have to break out the big boy. This thing is 
Look, I had to put on the suit. Them things, they, they got me good. <laughs> so let's go back at it. Grab the camera and show you what we got inside of here. This Julio has done expose those bees. A really nice hive right in there. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and open up the rest of the tree and really get a look and see what these bees are looking like. bad boy split right open and it doesn't look like there's a lot of stores in this thing they look like they're pretty empty I already was expecting to feed them but that still is pretty impressive and we got the bees on this side as well <laughs> now that that's done I'm a fire up the bee vac and I'm going to start vacuuming up these bees right here and Julio's since Charlie ain't with me today Julio's going to be the cameraman so he's going to be in control of what you all get to see so let's go ahead and start vacuuming up these bees one of the really nice things that I like about the the uh, everything bee vac is that you almost can talk over it with my vac, oh my gosh, that thing is so loud. But this, they call it the whisper mode, and it still does vacuum. So let's vacuum bees.
on here. So after vacuuming a bunch of the bees up, I just want to stop and make some comments on, on, about just what, what I observe right here. And I think for most of us, the first thing we're gonna notice is just how dark this comb is. So this comb has been in this tree, at least this part of it. Um, th this, is, this is anywhere from three to maybe even five years old comb. I mean, it's as dark as it is, you can tell that, that it's old. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the newer comb right here, which is probably this year's comb. Uh, we got a little bit of brood right there, and that's kind of not really what I'm expecting to find. Uh, at this time of the year, our queens are basically slowing down. I see some uncapped in there. Um, and then up at this end, right up here, we have some newer comb. But it's what I, I really fear about log hives is that the bees, for some reason, they, they, they die out because they basically starve to death. And I don't see any stores of honey in here. So if I had not come out here and move these bees, it's a very, very good chance that these bees right here would not have made it through the winter because I don't think they've got enough stores. Now, I can't see all what's behind all that comb, so they may have stores back behind that. But regardless, to supply this amount of bees with food that they need to survive for the winter, uh, I just don't think the comb is there sufficiently enough to provide the food that they would need. I'm going to start removing the comb now and maybe we'll get a little bit better picture as to just how large the hive really is. One thing, one thing I can see is that because that comb has been laying down like this, it's compressed all down here and it's fallen into each other. So this is basically useless comb. It, it just kind of like blended in together with each other. So they're not even using it. They're using a little bit up at the top where it didn't compress down together. So I have to actually separate the comb from the comb beneath it because it's just sitting on it and it's they welded and waxed it together.
Let's see if she's back there. Yep, I see her right there. Woo All right, let me see if I can find her again. There she is. Here's our queen. Right here. Well, she, she's ducking behind all the workers. Let me see. There, I can see her butt right there. Okay. Let's see where she went. She's up in here. I'm going to vacuum up a couple of these bees right here. Actually, I'm going to vacuum these up and make, make it real easy for you all to see her. She's coming out right now. All right. So here she is. Right here. All right, let me get some more of these out of the way. There she is. Hold on. Let me get some more of these out of the way. There's a cavity right in here, and she keeps running into it. She's right here on the top right now. Oh look, she's coming out. Maybe we can get her. No, not yet. She's going keeps going back in there. You see her, Julio? Can you see her right here? Yeah. Look at it right there on the So here she is. Let's see if we can grab her this time. Bingo! <laughs> We're gonna drop her in the cage. Boom. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and vacuum up the rest of these. So what's going on? There's a lot of robber bees out here. And I'm trying not to, all these bees that are flying all around over here, those aren't our bees. Our bees are gonna be inside of the, the, the log. And on, I'm, it's not going to be much long. I won't be able to back it much longer because there's just too many robbers out here. So I'm going to let things settle down a little bit and then maybe our hive bees will gather up someplace where I can get them. But there's so little stores in here. The robber bees can't be around for long because there's no, there's no honey mess in here. I had the, the ice chest that I put the comb in and I left it open too long. So it's full of robber bees. So what I'm gonna do is open the lid and try to let some of these things get out of here because I don't wanna bring all these things back up with me and they don't need to come back up with me. So look, look at all, all that. That's all robber bees. That's not hive bees. If it's a hive bee, they're gonna stay on that cone. You see all these bees that are coming out. All those are robbers. I'm going to shake it up a little bit and get them to move around. If they're running out, they're robbers. Now, we can, we can bring a couple of the robber bees back with us, but we don't want to bring this many back with us, that's for sure. All right, that's okay. Now we got our high bees in there <laughs> and our robber bees are out. So Daryl, or should I say Snuffy, so we've got, we got, you finally got the bees. Now I want you to tell the story of how that log got to where it, where it was. So tell me the story about that. Well, the story about that, it was right there in that oak tree. Big oak and tree. they came and cut that big oak tree down. Well, how come the trunk is still staying if they cut the tree down? Because we didn't want the trunk cut. Oh. 
and it was set right there by that forward truck. Yeah. And then I had to cut all the limbs, you know, away from it. Did you know there were bees in it? At yeah, the time? I knew they were in there. Okay. And I cut all the other stuff away from it, and then when I got it cleared up, then I rolled it back there with the tractor. And and when you were bringing the log back there with the tractor, did the bees bother you? Nope. So today they've been sitting back here since what June? Uh, let's see. I'm exactly where I think it was around maybe the first of July. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, because I remember it, it, it was the and end of June that, that, that when a, you first that was called. About a week after they had cut them down. And so when I told you that, I said that, well, because we're now going into the, the dearth where there's no honey flow and it's hot, yeah. let's see if we can wait till it cools off. And yeah. so here it is three months later. Yeah. We're, we're back onto a nectar flow with our golden rod, and we come and save these bees, I think, in the nick of time. So you saw us the whole time doing it. What, what was your take on what we did out there? Well, I was just, you know, kind of seeing how you were layering it, you know, taking the last to comb out, you uh -huh. know, and doing it carefully, because you don't want to kill a queen. Yeah. If you kill a queen, it'd be bad. Then you lose an eye. Yeah, but for right now. And everybody knows Julio, right? Oh, so this is Snuffy Smith or Daryl Smith. Smith. Yeah. And, and, and Julio has been in a couple of other videos with me. What about you, Julio? What was today like since you had to take over Charlie's job? Of video? Oh, I was minding my own business on my back porch <laughs> drinking some coffee. And then the next thing I know, I'm in bee hell right now. <laughs> what, what, what time was that when or I... Or bee heaven. What time did I call you? Oh, uh, let's see. What did you call me around 8.30? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. And right now it's not even 11 o'clock. Huh? Right. 9.15, you pick me up. And we're out here. We're, Put your britches on and let's go. We're driving away with it. Yeah. So that's it. We basically got, got the bees out of the tree. I, I, I'm, I'm certain we saved them. And then it's just back up to the abbey where they'll be fed. Hopefully they'll make it through the winter. But they'll be being fed the whole time. So that's all we got on this one. So, uh, Daryl, what, what are you going to be saying? I'm going to say thanks for watching. <laughs> Julio, are you going to say anything? Um, uh, oh, oh, no, keep on watching. <laughs> we'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Ed. Julio. Snuffy Smith. We're out of here until the next video. God bless everybody. <laughs>I'll say Mr. Ed, and then I'll point to him and say Julio, and then point to you as Daryl. No, okay. it's, no, it's, what's your nickname? Snuffy Smith. Snuffy Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Daryl or Snuffy Smith. <laughs>